welcome to the Tobiko Quick Start Guide to Installing SQL Mesh. You can follow these instructions for either Mac, Linux, or Windows operating systems. If there are any subtle differences in the installation process between them, I will show you what they are at the time. This video will take you through the SQL Mesh Quick Start Guide from our documentation. It installs an example project based on a DuckDB database. The first step is to check that we have the prereqs installed to run SQL Mesh smoothly, which is just Python. At the time of recording, it's 3.7 or higher, but feel free to check our docs for the current minimum supported version. You can check to see which version of Python you are running with the command python3 double dash version from your terminal. If it turns out you don't have Python installed, you can easily install with your favorite package manager, such as Homebrew or Conda. Once you're ready to go, it's time to install SQL Mesh from your terminal. For this demo, I have created this SQL Mesh Quick Start directory on my desktop that we will put all the files and subdirectories for our SQL Mesh project. So I will navigate to the directory. As with all Python, you'll want to create a virtual environment for this project to keep your packages and dependencies from interfering with one another or messing up your main environment. I am using V and V, but feel free to use whatever your favorite virtual environment creator is. I'm going to store my virtual environment in a hidden folder named .env. Notice when I hit enter on this command, you can see the creation of this folder in my finder window on the right. Now that we have created the environment, let's activate it. That's simply another command from the terminal, source, and then the location of the activation file in our environment folder. On Windows, this command is slightly different. You don't need source, instead use .env backslash scripts backslash activate. Depending on how your terminal is configured, you can see this worked because at the start of my input on the terminal, we have in brackets, the name of our virtual environment that we just created. Now that we're in our virtual environment, or if you don't have the visual confirmation of the brackets, we can double check using pip with which. Notice the output is also in our .env folder. Again, a slight difference here on Windows machines, use the where.exe pip command for this instead. Time to install SQL Mesh with pip install SQL Mesh and in brackets web. This will install SQL Mesh, the UI interface for it, and all of its dependencies. We see the output from the installation process, and when it's done, I'm going to clear my terminal so it's easier to see the next steps. Optionally, you can confirm the installation with the which command again, and we can see that it has been installed into our environment directory as well. That's it. SQL Mesh is now installed. Let's go a bit further and create the SQL Mesh Quick Start project files. For this, we use our first SQL Mesh command, SQL Mesh init duckdb. I want to pause here for a second because you may have noticed that in this command, we initialize SQL Mesh with a specific SQL dialect, in this case, DuckDB. We do this for your convenience so that you don't have to specify the dialect in every individual model file, but you can always change this in your project configuration file. When you're initializing SQL Mesh for your own projects, replace DuckDB with the SQL engine that you use, such as Snowflake, BigQuery, Databricks, Postgres, or MySQL, to name a few. Now, back to initializing our project. When we hit enter on this command, we see the creation of multiple files and directories. We have a directory for our models, which will hold all of your SQL and Python models. There's another directory for audits, which hold all the audits used to validate the output of a model after every run, and a test directory for all your data unit tests. The last thing I will mention here is the config YAML file, which defines SQL Mesh's database configuration. Now that our project is set, we can take our first SQL Mesh action. We will run our first plan to create and populate our production environment with our new models. Type SQL Mesh plan and hit enter. Here we see some output. SQL Mesh has run a test, set up our prod environment for us, since this is the first time we are running our plan, and is giving us a summary of the differences from our local environment to our empty prod one. Now, SQL Mesh is concerned with SQL related files, not all files in your directory, so we specifically track models. In our example project, we have three files that we are interested in that we can now add to our production environment. The prompt is asking us if we want to backfill our database itself that is, actually apply the plan. This will create the prod environment, run our queries, and update our database to make sure they accurately reflect our changes. So we enter Y for yes here, and we are done.
In this one quick video, you have learned how to install SQL Mesh, create your first project, and run your first SQL Mesh plan. Next time, I will explain about SQL Mesh plans and how they help you safely and effectively make changes to your project.